everyone. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Tim. Um, just a little bit about myself. Um, uh, I'm, I'm currently director of developer relations. So what I do is I help enable um, our developers in the um, um, in the software stack, in the software ecosystem, uh, by producing code uh, that's reusable, that can be, um, you know, um, that would help enable developers solve their problems, um, content through blogs, tutorials, documentations, and building the, the community. So, so the data science community is really, um, you know, growing, and and um, I think it's 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 really good way to scale the knowledge, uh, share the knowledge, and also help people solve their problems uh, and share, um, you know, the output and the outcomes of what we, we produce as developers. Um, and um, about myself, um, I've had some uh, some time uh, working in different developer roles. It's an R&D engineer, data scientist, that's a more con uh, customer facing. Um, and now, um, now with GraphCore and in, in, in working with like different uh, um, developers uh, of all shapes and sizes in different industries. So um, a little bit about, uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, GraphCore, our, our technology, our, our software, also um, why, why we needed a new type of, of uh, hardware or processors for AI specifically and potential use uh, and use cases where the hardware has been used. So our, our mission as a, as a company uh, is to help innovators find, um, you know, create the next, find the next breakthrough in AI, machine uh, learning um, and beyond. So whatever that is, uh, the next of the next big thing. So we wanna provide both the hardware and the software to do that. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So as uh, David mentioned earlier, um, we are a uh, UK-based uh, startup, uh, scale up, uh, currently at uh, raise, raise 730 million in funding. Um, we, are, uh, we are a unicorn uh, at around uh, 2.5 billion in valuation. Um, from 2016, we have grown to around 650 people with presence in uh, all, all over the globe. Um, yeah, and, and perhaps uh, before uh, we, I get on to like the, the main um, topic, uh, um, I, I would like to ask like Lizzie to like just um, pull up the poll. I have, I have a few questions. Okay, how does that work? Okay, great. So like, just uh, my question is just, you know, what's the main challenge you're seeing in your data science practice? Um, and yeah, let me see if I'm seeing that. So could be expensive model training, both on a, on a training time um, or as a, a price <laughs> wise. This is like large models take longer to train, hence uh, expensive compute wise, um, ML knowledge gap, um, lack of a deployment framework. We know a lot of uh, work has been done on experimentation, but how many of them are actually getting out into production, um, unsuitable or inaccessible hardware. Um, you know, uh, right now we, do, we have a lot of um, development in the deep learning uh, neural network uh, type of models, um, but how about the other types of models? Um, okay, so, well, do we see the results for that poll? Cool, um, yeah, there you go. So, okay, good to know the expensive model training, knowledge gap. Um, yeah, so, Basically, uh, I wanted to ask that question because, you know, one of the reasons, one, one of the things that we'd like uh, going back to as a company is the hardware lottery, which was uh, coined uh, or this article by Google um, released a, a few years ago about, um, so yeah, uh, 
um, describing when a research idea wins because it is suited to the available software and hardware and not because it is the best, uh, the superior alternative research direction. Um, in other words, um, it's the it's the hammer and nail. To, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. The solutions that we are producing are nail type of solutions to, to, uh, um, to the current uh, hardware. Uh, so that's why uh, we're seeing a lot of you know, transformers, uh, new networks, uh, CNNs, LSTMs. But these are uh, models that have been um, um, develop or that are have been progressing with the current hardware. So what what uh, we are doing uh, is actually just opening up the search space by creating a new type of architecture that would be um, at currently at the current state of the art, uh, performing faster uh, and you know achieving a quicker time to train, hence uh, cheaper. Uh, models to um to to train cheaper to train models, but at the same time, a different type of architecture uh, and what that looks like would be would enable different types of models like sparse compute, like GN uh, graph neural networks. Um, so because like I uh, if we notice, it's just getting like the models, the state of the art models are pretty much uh, very similar. It's just growing in size. Um, in, in different configurations, but but new types of of, um, of models are actually not as suitable to the current hardware. So moving on, so like what I said, a new processor is required if, if we're looking at CPUs as you know ideal for a scalar compute GPUs. Um, are ideal for vector type matrix multiplication. So that is why we have created the intelligence processing unit. So art artificial intelligence, wherein you have uh, more of a graph type of compute. Um, the, that's that's the that's the type of use cases that we have uh, designed our processor for. Um, particularly, um, our uh, the intelligence processing unit. Uh, the way we have designed it is to, uh, there are two key differentiators. There's very high memory uh, access speed. So there, there's a big chunk of, uh, of in-processor memory so that you have, that's like prime real estate uh, wherein you're getting uh, the data almost uh, instantaneously. Later on, I'll show what's the throughput of that uh, memory access within chip and parallelism. So parallelism through multiple instruction, multiple data um, that can be uh, programmatically um, controlled. You could, like you could put up a single type of codelet inside uh, like very small portion of uh, or, or a subset of cores that are available in, in a processor. So as I've mentioned earlier, the memory bandwidth of this in-chip memory is like 30 times uh, faster than GPUs. And just recently, we have released our latest um, wafer and wafer uh, processor. We call it we call it Bo. Um, these this is the world's first um, wafer and wafer processor integration. So basically, you have um, you know from from your from your cores, you have another layer on top of it of like uh, a silicon a silicon layer on top of it, minimizing. Um, you know, losses, making, making, um, making your um, communication faster, uh, making delivery, power delivery to the chip uh, more efficient. Hence, you could like have uh, faster um, clock speeds um, and, and better performance, uh, if, a more efficient performance. Um, so here's an example. Uh, you have uh, 350 teraflops of AI compute in a single chip, uh, 900 MB in processor memory, 1,472 um, processor cores. All uh, that's like um, fine could be fine grained uh, programmed in in, in, a, in a very like fine grained level. So what 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 that means is that you know well, the 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 other um, reason why we're, get, we're we've been doing this and building. Uh, the hardware is is is, uh, is to get into uh, ultra intelligence AI, wherein uh, we have larger models, uh, billion 
up to a billion, 100 billion uh, neurons, billion parameters, trillion parameters even. Um, and and we, we are building towards that. Uh, we have made the, the processor architecture in a way that it's, it's modular, it's scalable. Um, and, uh, you know, um, fast and, and, and just powerful. So that is like the, the future we're heading towards. Um, and like, what are, what's the difference uh, of, uh, of IPUs or intelligence processing unit? As earlier I mentioned, um, the, the model and the data is tightly coupled because, um, because you have uh, in-processor memory, uh, you don't need to um, offload uh, some of these data out of. Um, so there's the, there's that um, communication bottle. You don't have that communication bottleneck as you would have with GPUs um, because the the memory is in in processor. But at the same time, uh, if you need a little bit more memory, we we allow it, uh, or we have designed it in a way that you have streamable memory that comes from. The RAM uh, from uh, from your external uh, data storage as well, um, and uh, in a way that we have designed it is that you could uh, each processors could be scaled into different uh, racks. Where, for example, uh, this is a um, Bo uh, two thousand IP machine with four of these IP wafer um, that scales to uh, earlier I said three hundred fifty ter teraflops per chip. Um, times four of them, uh, 1.4, and so on and so forth, uh, with like um, 16 of these IPUs, 64, 256, and, and the, the biggest uh, scale out system at 1,024. Um, what, the, what that um, I, I mentioned earlier, this, this uh, fine grained parallelism, uh, is basically uh, you, you're making the most out of the multiple instruction, multiple data. So um, multiple instructions are happening or multiple computational um, compute steps are happening on different uh, subsets of the data. So if we're to look, so let's just say um, what that looks like on a real world application, uh, for example, you could have here a model, uh, model parallelism wherein we're breaking down, uh, this is a BERT example wherein you have um, you have your, your layers of your BERT model spread out across uh, different processor devices and uh, where you're splitting the models, oops, sorry. Uh, you're splitting the models uh, layers across different devices. So on a, on a multiple instruction, multiple data, you are breaking apart your, your data set wherein let's say this one is a, it's a micro batch of data. Uh, it, 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 it runs a forward pass on, on these few layers, embeddings and encoded layers in, in one device. And then on the next, if this was a time slice in the next time step, uh, a, a different micro batch of data runs on the first device and another micro batch uh, and, and the preceding micro batch one, let's call it goes to the, to the second device and so on and so forth where you have like um, a, a pipelining uh, compute, which, which speeds up the process because um, we can see at this point, you, you are fully utilizing all the, um, all the cores um, and uh, so on and so forth, right? Um, yeah. Come on. So aside from uh, aside from uh, the hardware, so it is um, important to have um, a software software um, integration software ecosystem. So I had I had another poll for that. Like, uh, what what is um, actually um, let let's pull that second poll. So what do you think will accelerate the adoption of state of the art AI? In the next few years, um, yeah, let's see. Because I think uh, I like I like looking at um, AI, the the value of AI or or the adoption of AI as not just on a narrow uh, like time to train. Uh, I know we said 
it's expensive uh, to train uh, an AI machine learning model, for example, on a, on a hardware perspective, but also uh, considering the time, um, um, you, there was another question about ML knowledge gap, like machine learning, a data scientist time is also expensive. So that adds to the whole uh, cost, right? So overall, it's not just time to train or time to convergence or, or you know, workload run times, but also the time to value. And time to value includes um, the time it takes from when your developer pulls code, sets up environment, sets up configuration, runs the training, even you know, create a deployment engine, for example. So cool. Um, what do you think? Uh, okay, let's see the poll. Um, what would accelerate the adoption? Uh, most few answered accessible knowledge base, so documentation, tutorials, self-paced courses, open source code and libraries, and cool. So it's the knowledge base and the software. Um, so that's why um, in, in, in GraphCore, uh, we have been integrating with a software ecosystem that is one, uh, data scientists know and love, uh, two, uh, that has very broad, um, you know, uh, documentation, tutorials, even community uh, support. Uh, we we had to build some of the things uh, from ground up from ourselves, like like Poplar SDK. That's what we call um, the the hardware specific uh, SDK uh, and software in order to enable running um, your framework level uh, code uh, into into the IPU. But but what this looks like is that you can run stuff uh, using our like like an um like a fork or, or an extension of the pytorch tensorflow uh, we have been doing um integration with with hugging face for example so these are our recent um integration with with pytorch uh pytorch lightning um hugging face we have been actually part partnering with them to create um to make the their their transformer libraries work out of the box uh, so you can actually pull code from hugging face model hub um, and just yeah use it as a, as a checkpoint use a hugging face data set um, and, and and transformers and run it in in ipus other than that um, you know uh, ecosystem management that involves like setting up your your infrastructure, your development environment, um, like here VMware integration, Docker Hub. So we have created, um, we we support Docker. We have uh, we release a set of images that are meant to support um, ease of use, which contains your. Your libraries, your uh, data science uh, toolkit, Jupyter notebook, all that kind of stuff, um, and also we have produced um, product. Um, we have we release uh, images that are catered towards production and deployment. So um, these are more minimal type of, of, of images that are meant to be extensible and uh, deployable in in um, in production. Uh, and aside from that, uh, we have just recently released our first uh, like self-serve free access to IPUs. So with with Spell ML and um, yeah, Spell is a is a cloud-based MLOps platform. Uh, if you sign up to this, just go to spell.ml/graphcore, sign up, and then you have access to IPU Pod sixteen. So it's it's that um, um, it's that rack uh the smallest system that you can purchase actually we're making it available for a limited time you can run uh, we run our ml perf benchmarks uh on this system um and you know that that's that's pretty cool i think it's it's it, you have super compute access for free um and and aside from that like as you you uh, as the poll has shown like 
access access to open source material and code is important for adoption. So we have a growing model garden um, that supports um, your your popular um, models. At the same time, it's growing. We, currently, we have like fifty of them um, in NLP, computer vision models, speech processing, uh, even some of those that are. Um, we 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 believe that have like very strong potential in in the IPUs like graph neural networks, uh, spiking neural networks, um, biologically inspired uh, neural networks that uh, the current uh, hardware GPUs are not very strong at. So basically, um, uh, you will see. I, I've mentioned earlier. So aside from just the the main uh, our current state of the art, uh, the best models out there for NLP, wherein you're just looking at uh, lowest uh, time to convergence, like the birds GPTs, you have that available. Um, we have units, YOLOs, and efficient net. But at the same time, what we're really very excited about are these complex and, 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 and sparse type of models, like probabilistic model, Bayesian models, and graph neural networks. Um, for which like the, you have your industries such as healthcare, um, finance, um, where these kind of models have uh, shown like um, are like, like very important, like, like uh, not, not your plain old um, um, NLP models, let's say like, like protein synthesis and, and, and molecular discovery, things like that requires new types of models. And that's, that's what we're really building towards. And I've said earlier, like how, how, does, how, how do we perform in comparison with the current state of the art? Um, yeah, with the current architecture, because of like the, its unique architecture, we're able to, uh, to have a more um, like efficient, uh, efficient hardware. So um, as you can see, these are, these are our, um, ML perf results. Um, let us see how how it um, compares to. Well, we would have like different different models would be um, would be performing differently or your your NLPs. We 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 actually uh, as an example uh, our, our comparison to um, DGX A one hundred GPU and CPUs. Um, for BERT, uh, this is like twice um, at 10.6 versus 20. So, so you like time time 2x speed uh, versus GPUs. Um, for other type of uh, models, actually like efficient net, um, we have seen, uh, so these are now these are, we're getting into like those um, new types of models. We have actually seen that, um, we are performing uh, uh, so much faster. So here you got like a three x speed up on 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 new models. So so it's it's beyond beyond transformers, beyond uh, BERT and ResNets. So aside from that, I've, I've earlier mentioned the the world's first uh, wafer on wafer and a wa wafer on wafer silicon has actually. We have shown uh, that we have uh, had 40% improvement. Um, right now, that's like the best uh, and most efficient uh, single chip uh, processor out there. Yeah, and, and because of that, uh, as I earlier mentioned, um, what does this mean? It just opens up a lot of opportunities on the current state of, of uh, state-of-the-art models. So, so we're achieving uh, faster and, 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 and actually cheaper time to train. Um, I have also discussed a little bit about like the software ecosystem that it's, you know, uh, works out of the box with, with, with open source uh, frameworks. Uh, we have provided examples. So it actually has uh, opened up uh, the opportunity for, for, um, for different uh, IP um, markets to, to be able to run um, you know, train their models and explore different types of um, of models in different use cases. So, again, as as earlier mentioned, like 
we're doing really well in NLP and computer vision. Uh, the, but the next next step is is to take them out, take them to like more exciting stuff. Like, uh, well, not more exciting, but but we are very excited about it because for for a time, um, the growth and the, the 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 pace of innovation in in models such as graph. Um, has not been as fast as you would in, in NLP, in BERT, in computer vision. So here are some of the examples where in, you know, current state of the art computer vision, we're getting 12 times higher throughput with IPUs, with efficient net. And, and now we're building uh, vision transformers, for example, uh, for healthcare. Um, these are the use cases where in uh, the, uh, we have used uh, pre-trained biomedical language models uh, using BERT and, and fine-tune them uh, specifically uh, getting like 5x time to train. So for graph neural networks, um, this is very promising. A third of the time it takes uh, to train um, graph CNNs uh, compared to GPUs. Um, here are the use cases because of that speed up time and also just being able to run stuff uh, faster. Um, we there there have been like these these are like the example of the uh, use cases that we have in um, in healthcare. So COVID nineteen prediction uh, where we have uh, that is like the the example that we have shown, uh, especially for um. um as you would remember back uh, when when COVID was starting, like you got plenty of data, you want to have like very uh, low latency, um, high speed uh, training time, so that you have action the 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 outcome, the predictions that you have are actionable and and you know and timely. It, it, it's available in a timely manner. So that is why uh, like that's the most value uh, that 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 that. IPU has, has provided. So here is the example of our uh, NLP using uh, um, an out of the box bird and repurposing it uh, for protein discovery. So we have actually recently uh, released a blog about a deep dive on, on this uh, protein discovery use case. And, and again, um, you know, uh, 2x of, of time to train uh, comparing with DGX uh, A100. Uh, so other other types of applications wherein um, we are accelerating um, um, simulation uh, simulation type of use cases using IPUs um, because of its fine grained parallelism wherein you know, you have 1,472 cores uh, where imagine if this was like uh, like each molecule having a certain, uh, you, you know, the, like like certain computes happening on each course where in probably like each course could be your, your single uh, molecule and that, those type of simulation uh, in, in, in the Excel, uh, in the in that AI and simulation space is, is that kind of flexibility is actually very important for these type of, uh, of use cases. So this is where the beyond, beyond ML actually comes in. And again, as I said earlier, so, so I, this, is, this is one of those, uh, these are those examples where you have high energy physics, computational fluid dynamics, so not, not just machine learning uh, examples. So, yeah, and and aside from that, um, like we, I think in the poll earlier, uh, it was mentioned that um, like having having a knowledge base, having a community is quite important in order to um, to make AI adoption possible. And we also have other, uh, we have. Our academic program, where we work closely with with researchers to um, to produce new type of research, um, you could visit them in slash academic or we even do guest lectures and just you know explore the art of the possible uh, because a lot of a lot of the content we currently have um, you know we don't know 
um, what is that next next of the next breakthrough and and being having like a new type of hardware um, we make it available to researchers and even to educational partners to create like um, like um, instructional materials or even uh, collaborate on, on on like potential use cases and that's that's my uh, quick talk um, you can uh, next week uh, we will have like I would have like a, a hands-on walkthrough or on a specific use case running on an IPU uh, how a model would look like how that fine grain parallelism, model parallelism, data parallelism, pipelining is implemented in the hardware. So mm, you could have a sneak peek, go to this link, Graph Core Workshop. Um, you can also sign up to spell, um, give that, um, go for a trial, uh, set up your account and have free trial access. Uh, I've mentioned some things around hugging face uh, models being available. Um, you can visit, visit these uh, links for our developer resources and academic program resource. But so far, that's that's what I wanted to share. Um, it's I know it's a it's a lot of stuff to cover, but but I want to have some time to have a Q and A uh, for for you folks. Perfect. Thanks very much for that, Tim. Uh, that, was, that was a great session. Um, I must admit, I'm feeling a tiny little bit old, if I'm honest, because I, I bought my first GPU back in 1999, oh, yeah. uh, which is insane, man. I was building PCs to play computer games on and stuff like that. And I appreciate things have changed, obviously. But yeah, I was having a little flashback as, uh, as you were talking, man. So um, I've definitely got a couple of questions from, us, from myself. Uh, from myself. Uh, we've, we've only got the one coming from the Q&A, so I'll kick things off. Um, if mm -hmm. there's some more coming from the Q and A, we'll obviously uh, get get to those as well. And um, thank you very much for for flagging uh, obviously about next week as well. I'm really looking forward to you know diving into a specific use case. Um, I think that will really help in terms of like seeing where 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 things can can be taken with these IPUs and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, I guess my first question then, um, I'm assuming there are some sort of conceptual differences when you're developing models to you know to run in the IPU and um, you know are, are there what are the main differences if so yeah um, so the the MIMD or multiple instruction multiple data and single instruction multiple data that that's like the main one of the main differences uh, um, like GPUs would have single instruction, multiple data architecture. So it means like I've shown earlier the the like the pipelining, for example. So those kind of um, of development paradigms uh, is something that is like a, a broader tool to that that we have enabled for developers. Because then um, you know you could be running a single codelet on a core the, and there's like 1472 cores wherein you know it's like it's like many too many it feels that's what what uh, like from my uh, from my mind wherein you have um, SIMD you have multiple like multiple data where you have the same instruction running multiple data um, so that also is that paradigm that helps enable simulation types of, of, of use cases. I've seen it in, uh, for example, like fluid dynamics, um, molecular dynamics, wherein, you know, uh, you're putting a single like molecule in one of the cores, and then, you know, you have a specific code there, and they're just interacting all at the same time. Um, I, I would have like that example. So actually the, the the pipelining and model parallelism was one of the um, uh, uh, like a, a diagram that I will show next week and how that looks like in code. Um, so a lot of the parallelism. So so that's that's a lot of things that that we have introduced uh, with the new architecture. Um, aside from that, there is a high, uh, very high um, in in memory process uh, in 
processor memory. So um, what that means, so let's say like um, things like recomputation, uh, rec like instead of um, saving optimizer states, for example, in memory, so the way you optimize could actually be just, you know, just forgetting about these uh, optimizer states and rec recomputing them because it's faster to recompute than to store it because when you're mm -hmm. storing it, there's, there's that, it's, it's sort of a different trade-off um, balancing um, um, that, that, that communication cost. So for example, because that, because um, you don't have, you have very high throughput within processor. So you don't have to think about um, like the, the communication bandwidth, yeah. for example. Yeah. It sounds like something you can absolutely get obsessed with as well, eh? Like understanding how it, how it all works and uh, getting, you know, extra levels of speed out of it as well. So in terms of the benchmarking, and some of those benchmarkings were, were definitely very impressive as well. So um, yeah. I guess one of the questions that may come up, um, um, obviously it's specific use cases, you've highlighted quite a few of them, you know, it's obviously not, not for every uh, machine learning application out there. And there's probably going to be a lot of people out there that perhaps don't need, um, you know, th this level. Um, but for those that do, um, you know, can you take, you know, existing code, PyTorch, TensorFlow, whatever, and run it on an IPU out the box. Is that is that possible, or is there you know is there some tips from that side of things? Yeah. So so um, we have uh, we have made uh, like our, we have a growing model garden to make um, you could, which you could take models out of the box. Um, there is some code changes. For example. Um, um, PopTorch data loader. So, so because the architecture is different, the data loader, um, we have additional configurations that you could set in the IPU, but we have made um, PopTor PyTorch and TensorFlow um, available with some, you know, extended uh, your, your existing uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch models. Um, with Hug and Face, we have actually been um able to like just take stuff in hug and face model hub take it in run it in in an ipu so so it's it's you know to really harness things right like it's 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 it's, it's I, the way i see it is it's a balance of of uh generalizability and also optimization can you take your your models that were produced in in say a gpu and then run it in an ipu out of the box Yes, you can. You have Onyx. We have, um, yeah, you have Onyx, for example, the, the your open uh, open standard for porting models across uh, um, hardwares. So yes, um, if you want to harness, if you're you're more on the more power user, where you know what that one second is really important to me then you know we have made it in a way that um it's it's easy to configure we have uh been making a lot of effort to to sort of pr provide the, the documentation we have um we have deep dives on how we have actually uh, achieved the mlperf results that we have um and you know just the interface is is very similar to your uh, to what you're used to. Um, so we have our own. For example, uh, we make available the um, an, an extension of PyTorch with with, with IPU support uh, or or TensorFlow. Uh, so we make it available through our our SDKs, and it's it's not crazy, you know, like it's not rewriting your code. It's, it's a few code changes. Uh, which is quite um, handy, really. It's like it's like when you're running multi multiple GPUs, right? Um, it's not it's not it's not just you know uh, like an attribute wherein you know device equals CPU, device equals GPU, right? There's you wrap it in an execution scheme uh, scheme, for example, to to parallelize it. Yeah. Um, so it's it's 
it follows the same paradigm. So, um, so yeah, me out of the box, yes, minimal code changes and and easy to more familiar interfaces and abstraction. Amazing, amazing. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I've got a little bit of a generic question, actually, and it's more me being uh, nosy than anything else, I think. So we, we've got a couple of questions in the in the Q&A, Michael and Alon. Uh, I will definitely come to those. Um, I think one of the things that was quite clear when you were giving your presentation, though, there um, is, you know, graph core and the technology. It's very much being used at the cutting edge uh, of you know data science and machine learning and AI. Um, you know, the use cases that you highlighted were, you know, obviously super interesting and um, i just wondered if if you personally had come across one that was like the one where you'd seen the biggest impact uh, or, or the one where you thought man this is really really cool sort of thing you know it, it, i guess you get exposed to quite a lot at graph core so i just wondered what that was like there yeah yeah i think i think i i'll talk about like personally right like like um access like like access to super compute or, or you know not everybody is a you know big hyperscaler but what we have made here is that you know you could you could freaking run uh, like bird large models in just in in 20 30 minutes an hour or so for me that was pretty cool because like in my in my previous like life right how many has access is able to run state of the art models uh let's say in, in that in a few steps or even have the hardware to to run that and here we were just like our trial is is for large 350 million parameters like if you're a data scientist like that that's pretty cool i think uh, it, it opens up a lot of things now you could like yeah fi fine tune it as much as you can, as much as you want, and iterate with a, a few num, you know, more than you're able to. If the speed of iteration um, is just that fast, um, yeah. So, so that's that's, I think, from a like impact wise, like I like I've been building stuff for, let's say, um, there's this one, the the, the chest X-ray type of work, for example, that was very impactful because, like, um, yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> like it's COVID prediction. It's it really showed that it, the value of having faster iteration and turnover time, because you know, it, it, it if it takes a few hours or even days for some of these uh, models, then it's already stale. Like the trend has already has already shifted your model is already predicting a wrong yeah. <laughs> wrong thing so i think those were like those were the two really cool stuff and, and very impactful i think uh, that from from my brief experience uh, working with graph core it's right. not been a lot like I, I, i've been with a company for uh half a year so yeah. so yeah Amazing, amazing. Yeah, but both excellent uh, use cases and examples. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'll jump to the question in the Q&A from Michael Bateman. If you just click on the Q&A feature yourself, if you want to read along at the same time, some, sometimes that can be helpful. Uh, mm -hmm. Michael is asking about TPUs um, mm -hmm. and about comparisons with TPUs and stuff like that. Is that something that you've kind of you know looked at at GraphCore? You know, do they differ? How do they compare, uh, mm -hmm. et cetera? Um, in terms of... Uh um like benchmarks and comparisons uh we have not run um like head-to-head -head comparisons like yeah uh, if they submit mlperf so those are the numbers in mlperf but but like recent mlperf submissions of tpu um uh, it's uh, they don't even uh, submit in 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 the same categories mm -hmm. um so so i think um uh, mostly of most of our uh yeah our, our benchmarks are on GPUs so far. Um, similarity, we're both accelerators. Um, we have uh, made it a way so that um, IPUs are more general purpose uh, rather than, uh, you know, application specific. So. 
Aidan, again, thank you very much, Tim. That sounds good. Um, next question there from uh, Alan. Uh, hopefully I'll do this justice, but if you can read along at the same time, Tim, that 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 would be great. Um, Alan's saying, uh, I have a use case that I'm uh, not using big neural networks, but or even simple classification uh, models because it's expensive and slow to use on the server, uh, especially when the receiving rates of the data are high. Uh, do you think that IPU and GPU with big models uh, deep neural networks would be able to compete further uh, with CPU uh, and simple AI models on things like decision trees and stuff like that. Yeah, so so um, I I can comment about uh, uh, IPUs. Okay, um, so there we have seen that like on um, smaller models that that actually IPUs really perform very well because of that in processor memory um because it's just you know you have replica that like so there is data parallelism where you have replicas of a small model multiple times hence you're 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 running um how many ever of that um of that small model inside a single uh, processor and because you're running you know, on an in processor um memory where you have like around i think it's, it's 6.5 terabytes per second so these low latency high speed requirements are actually we're getting so much better than than cpus and um, I, I suppose even gpus on these smaller models so one example would be like like think spiking neural networks so they're not very very large models but um, we have really shown a lot of uh, improvements on, on spiking neural networks just because of that in processor memory. So anything that fits that, like very small models, anything that fits within a single processor, we, we, we're, um, we're quite good at it. Amazing, amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I've got a couple of final questions. Um, and again, I'm just a little bit nosy at times, so uh, I'm keen to learn. I like it. <laughs> uh, I'm in. I'm in. This is this is my dream job, man. This is my dream job. So, um, yeah. In terms of graph core, I mean, first of all, you know, it's always great. You know, obviously, I'm, we're based in the UK. My business is in the UK. Uh, it's always nice to see other UK businesses doing well. And um, specifically, you know, obviously, graph core designing chips, working with chips and stuff like that, super interesting. And um, you know growing crazy scale well-funded big plans for the future and stuff like that so i kind of wanted to just touch on you know what, what's next for for graph core um you know what what do the next couple of years look like if if you are if you do know and you're able to share with us and, and perhaps just a little bit more about you know what it's like working at graph core if you don't mm -hmm. mind yeah yeah um so i gave you a glimpse of like the next thing so the the bow world's first uh wafer on wafer it was just launched a month ago. So what that does is that it enables us because of you know the, the efficiency um, in, in, in the compute, uh, you know, that enables us to scale out to the good computer. So the good computer, which is like 1,024 uh, processors building towards trillion parameter models. So that's, that's the next thing. Um, um, and then there's like, there's excitement in the company for that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, because it's, 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 it's interesting. It's like just like everything, like all, it, it gets rolled back to even all, all the previous existing models, like 40% at least out of the box. And then, wow, that, that opens a lot of stuff for, for the next big thing. Right. So that, that's, uh, that's one. Um, so we have been, so I, I mentioned that the academic program, so I'm looking after uh, this program where we work with researchers, so a lot of um, um, big science uh, type of, because uh, they need those kind of big compute clusters, uh, supercomputers, uh, so the stuff that comes out of those, um, but so that there's the excitement there. So, so I've seen some of them, the spiking neural network type of work, uh, graph neural networks, um, and, and its application on, on actual real world stuff like protein discovery, right? Um, those 
um, next breakthrough type of uh, where we've been putting our putting a lot of our time and effort into working on those. The cloud uh, integration is actually one of the biggest like um, um, big thing. <laughs> so because we all, everybody talks about fast time to compute, easy, easy to use, but I think uh, you know uh, providing access to to data scientists and I was saying like oh when I had the the compute to run bird models like that was so amazing so let's let's make it accessible so that people get to experiment more and innovate more and and faster um, um, yeah so a lot of the cloud work um, community work as a data as a developer relations. Um, like we're building our community now that we have cloud access, it may like now people will have, like the community would have a place to go to and, and try stuff out. So things like uh like this this type of um you know collaboration with data science festival is actually one of those things. We're building our community, you know, um you can reach out to me in in, in Twitter or wherever, and then we could just like hack some stuff. Uh, play around with things uh, uh, like we were in a, an, an event recently and just like playing with you know um, like yeah, creating fun fun demos and all that and, but at the same time useful to for, for the developer community and that actually connects to like how how is it like working with with, with graph to work with uh, for graph core so it is it is like we are very um it's very exciting, like like working with really bright people, and because it's it's full stack, like from the hardware to the software to like vertical type of uh, you know applications that are have real world impact. You, you have a uh, you have a breadth of of creative and smart people working with. Uh, the culture is is um, is very innovative. Um, and also, you know, people are treated as adults and act as adults, but at the same time have that fun, creative, uh, you know, side to it. Uh, so, yeah, and, and and there's just this culture of like, just because you're you're at the the cutting edge of things, people are used to just to, you know finding new things and collaborating and finding new stuff. So, yeah. It sounds really good, man. Re rewarding on so many levels. And uh, yeah, I, I might be heading over to your careers page after this and uh, oh, yeah, see, yeah, see yeah, if definitely. there's any jobs, you know. So uh, for everyone else out there, uh, obviously, please do do check out the careers page. And I must admit, Tim, I feel like developer relations is probably your true calling in life. Uh, I, I could tell you're really, you know, very passionate about this, building community and getting out there and meeting people. So um, that kind of does sort of two, two o'clock there. We're, we're bang on time. This is the most professional event I've ever run Tim so uh, <laughs> I think um, it, it's been great to have you with us today uh, really you know very thankful for Graphcore for being part of you know the you know data science festival for, for this year really appreciate the partnership uh, having that community mindset of coming and sharing uh, introducing people to, to ipus in some cases uh, re really really appreciate it and um, i'm very much looking forward to next week so we'll, we'll be back uh, sort of same time next week i believe to to go into some specific use cases so i'm really looking forward to that bit of a deep dive uh, and we'll go from there so yeah th thank you very much tim uh, i'm going to give a quick shout out to kelly i did see kelly's in the chat as well so kelly's been uh, very um key from uh, from graphcore to making this happen as well so um, thank you very much for your time today i hope you've enjoyed it tim and uh, we'll, we'll be back next week to go again yeah my pleasure it was really good uh thanks for having me and thanks to the rest of the community and looking forward to our next you know next sandbox session yeah definitely thanks everyone we'll see you next week uh, speak to you all soon cheers tim thanks bye -bye. cheers cheers david bye